Blue holes of the Bahamas are one of the great unexplored environments of the world. And from their depths, scientists are just beginning to uncover a Bahamas no one could have imagined. Beneath the surface of the water, quiet ponds often open into extensive cave systems carved from limestone bedrock by groundwater. During the Ice Ages, sea levels were hundreds of feet lower than they are today. Rainwater trickled through the labyrinth of passages, creating delicate calcite formations, which grew into stalactites and stalagmites. An arid climate prevailed at that time, and the only available fresh water was found deep within the limestone platform of the Bahamas. The freshwater lens was accessible only through the caves that reached down into the elevation of the water table. Rising sea levels filled the caves with water, and the island's freshwater, floating on the surface of the denser salt water, provided place for animals to drink and carnivores to obtain food. The West Indies typically produce fragmentary fossil records, but in December 2004, a treasure trove of fossils was discovered by cave diver Brian K. Cook. While decompressing, he spotted what he believed were two tortoise shells and a crocodile skull. In 2004, I came to the island uh, to, to guide someone in, in doing cave diving. And when we come up, we have to decompress. We have to come up very slowly so that we don't get uh, a sickness called the bends. And while we were slowly coming up out of the cave, uh, we usually just kind of poke around. We have a lot of time to do that. And while we were poking around, I found a piece of a, a turtle shell that had a strange curvature to it. And it, I couldn't really, I didn't, I saw it and I said, boy, that looks kind of like a tortoise, but there are no tortoises in the Bahamas. It was very obviously a land tortoise. Since that time, entire skeletons of extinct tortoise, crocodiles, reptiles, birds, and mammals, once indigenous to Abaco, were found within the dark sediments of Sawmill Sink. It's not the most fun environment to work in. First of all, we're in an overhead environment, so we're cave diving. And that takes specialized training, specialized equipment. We use guidelines when we go in the cave in order to find our way out. The hydrogen sulfide has blocked out all the light altogether. So we have the hydrogen sulfide, it smells, it smells like uh, rotten eggs. It eats up our equipment because it's very acidic. Um, so we have a lot more maintenance on our equipment. Bubbles that do escape knock down these bacterial mats and they're oftentimes this thick. And they just come down in giant layers and just sit on you. So we're usually working in visibility about this far. And we sit down there for hours and hours and we just scoop at the sediment like that, just using our hands. And then you stop and any of the, any of the heavy material settles to the bottom of the little hole that you've just scooped out. And you pick out, if you can see them, pick out the tiny little bones and you put them in a bag or a box or something like that. It's not like we can go down and there's a, a flat piece of rock and they're just sitting there and we pick them up and put them in the bags. A lot of times we have to dig these items out and they're in very flocculent peat. All of the, all of the bottom is, is this organic matter. It's leaves and branches and, and all different parts of vegetation and some, and some animal matter as well. And what happens is over thousands and thousands of years it compresses and it turns into this peat mat. 
And so um, what we did was we started moving some of this mat in sections and we, could, we started finding more and more bones within these layers. All of this organic matter that falls in, all of the, the, the leaves and everything like that, as they decay, they give off hydrogen sulfide gas as part of the byproduct of decay. Now there's also a bacteria that reduces this hydrogen sulfide. And so all of this biological activity that's going on within the water column, it needs oxygen in order to, to, to create the process. Well, it sucks all of the oxygen out of the water supply. So anything below that layer, and it always stratifies out in the, in the water, anything below that layer has no oxygen in the environment. So now you have this perfect soft packing material, the peat, the leaves and, and things like that, and this zero oxygen environment and it can't be any better for protecting and preserving these bones. I mean, here you get, you, you're looking at something that's almost 3,000 years old, right here, and it's perfectly preserved. Most other places in the world, when they find these things, they're little fragments that are mostly dissolved away and, and not nearly as good a shape. So it's, it's really a very unique environment. In February 2007, scientists studying the fossils from this blue hole were in Abaco to collect study and discuss the findings of the last two years' work. Not, we've not seen that anomaly before. Most of the anomalies occur back to... Under the Antiquities, Monuments, and Museums Corporation, known as the AMMC, the sawmill sink site is now a protected blue hole where diving is prohibited without a permit. Located in the central Abaco Pine Barrens, sawmill sink has a diameter of 50 feet at the surface. It is a natural animal trap. Well, it's more likely that the crocodile was on land encountering the tortoise than the tortoise was swimming around in the sinkhole and the crocodile got it that way. That right. makes less sense. Because the, the sinkhole, somehow they interacted. The sinkhole can't be a place for the croc to hang out anyway. What's it going to What's it going to eat in the sinkhole? I mean, in some of these real steep walled sinkholes, it probably couldn't get out. A, a trip to the sinkhole for a crocodile seen the one yesterday. was probably a one-way trip. Out how to get in there with rope. Dick and Shelley Franz are studying the tortoises and small reptiles from the sawmill sink. Now, I've been working on fossil tortoises for a long time. This is the most amazing fossils that I've ever encountered. We now have 